Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to TV Africa News. This is Africa Today. My name is Nahabi Kajura, but first, the headlines. Ugandans urged to use peaceful means to resolve conflicts. Government urged to provide public toilets at village level. A new Congo mountain eruption eminent warns volcanologist. In our sports today, Bierk was the named manager of the month of August. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. We start with one of our top stories. Now, the Human Rights Uganda Commission has called upon all Ugandans to use peaceful means of resolving any possible conflicts as a way to ensure the highest standards of dignity for all. Now, the remarks followed the double explosions that broke the city, killing seven people and injuring over 30. We have more on this report. In a statement, the chairperson of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, Maria Mwangadia, said this incident came at a time when there have been several other isolated incidents of terror in the country. She said it also comes on the backdrop of the week commemorating the November 18, 2020 riots in which both civilians and security personnel were injured as the country prepared to hold general elections. She said the commission strongly condemns acts of violence and terror and cowardly attacks whose purpose is to spread fear and terror among peace-loving Ugandans. Wangadia said that they commiserate with the families that have lost their loved ones and pray for the speedy recovery of all the injured, adding that everyone has a right to life as enshrined in Article 22 of the Constitution of Uganda. Wangadia said all life should be treated with utmost respect and dignity, adding that national peace and security is as important as individual rights and freedoms. She implored all responsible government agencies to ensure that the victims receive speedy and appropriate redress. Moving on, the Minister for Kampala, Hajat Misa Kabanda, has asked government to construct public toilets at village level to ensure proper sanitation and hygiene among Ugandans. Now she say this in commemoration of World Toilet Day today under the theme Valuing Toilets. We have more on this report. Speaking at a function held at Chitebi Health Center 3 in Kampala, Minister for Kampala Capital City Authority Hajat Minsa Kabanda said access to proper sanitation ensures people's dignity and helps prevent the spread of diseases such as cholera diarrhea and others, hence there is need for government to construct toilets in every village in the country. According to Hajat Minsa Kabanda, access to toilets and sanitation services are key to gender equality because children, women and girls are more disadvantaged due to lack of basic sanitation which affects their personal hygiene, dignity and safety. Moreover, when some people in the community do not have safe toilets, everyone's health is threatened. I've already talked about that. Joram Muhwezi, the manager of Home Clean, a company which was assigned by KCCA to collect garbage in Kampala, said there is need for more toilets in communities since people make use of polythene bags and throw in the garbage they collect, which is a challenge to them. In commemoration of World Toilet Day today, KCCA opened up a new toilet at Chitebi Health Center 3 to improve hygiene at the facility. Each year, World Toilet Day on 19th November highlights the importance of sanitation and hygiene in driving improvements in public health, gender equality, education, economic development and environmental protection. This year's theme is valuing toilets. Nalugo Muyingo, Africa Today. 
Thank you so much, your reporter. Moving on, Uganda Education Services Commission partners with NETA Uganda to embrace digital recruitment of education sector staff in order to curb the increased number of ghost employees in the sector and enable efficiency in the recruitment services. We have more on this report. While addressing the press at the Uganda Media Center, Dr. Twine Mugasha, the Chief Executive Officer, National Information Technology Authority, Uganda, said that they came in to support the education sector in transforming from the manual process to a digital one, which will enable efficiency and also eliminate the problem of ghost employees in the education sector, and have also provided digital tools required in the recruitment exercise to schools around the country. NITA Uganda, as rightly said by the public, uh, the government secretary, we came in to support their transformation, transforming that manual process into a digital process to enable efficiency. And uh, we know uh, how uh, the benefits of a digital solution, I will not go through all of them, but the main or the major, one of the biggest achievements. One of the biggest achievements of this process, of this solution, in the education sector is the problem of uh, ghost soldiers, unaccountable uh, records in the education sector. This is going to greatly uh, solve and support in analyzing the information within the education sector in terms of uh, how many uh, teachers are are registered. We have also worked with the schools to enable them uh, connect or get connected to this system. We have provided digital tools. Uh, we have provided laptops. Uh, last this week on Monday, we are we're in Karamoja. We are we are going to West Nile in a few weeks. So all schools are going to be approached. This not this not just for only Kampala. We are going to be. Uh, spreading out the system in all schools in the country. Professor Dr. Samuel Luboga, the Chairperson Education Services Commission Uganda, clarified that with financial support from the United Nations Capital Development Fund and guidance from NITA Uganda, the digital platform will improve the efficiency of application and recruitment of staff, as well as providing digitalized intervention for the recruitment functions of the Commission. In order to improve the efficiency of the application process and, and recruitment process and with financial support from United Nations Capital Development Fund and with guidance from NITA U, the Education Service Commission has developed an e-recruitment system. The electronic recruitment system broadly aims to provide digitized intervention for the recruitment function of the Commission. At the Education Service Commission, we fully recognize the role of technology in transformation of recruitment function. Digitization will facilitate timely service delivery to the clients of the Commission, and this will allow a short turnaround time for decision making and that should be good news. This system will involve creation of a personal user profile and an active email address that will be required during the access to the system. TV Africa News, Kachanchu Mutabazi reporting. Away from that, we take a quick break. We shall come back with our international news.
Welcome back for the break. to watching TV Africa, the right to know. In our international news today, the Nyamirajira volcano, a close neighbor of the more famous Nyirangongo, in the east of the DRC could experience an upcoming eruption but a prayer without any danger for the houses according to the goma volcanological observatory warning on wednesday take a look at the story Celestine Kasereka Mahinda, the scientific director of the Goma Volcanological Observatory, told journalists that they went to Nyamuragira with the helicopter of the UN force in the Democratic Republic of Congo and worked for more than two hours in the crater. He said that their observations are that Nyamuragira remains active and that an internal eruption inside the crater may occur in the near future. He explained that when they talk about eruption, the population assumes that the lava will flow towards the houses, but for the experts, scientifically, the eruption is the appearance of lava on the surface. Kelestin Mahinda also pointed out that unlike Nyiragongo, which directly threatens the cities of Goma and Gisenyi, a Rwandan city bordering Goma, the previous external eruptions of Nyamuragira were directed into the Virunga Park or towards nearby roads. He say that Nyamuragira last erupted in 2011 and the volcano has been experiencing internal activity since 2014. The scientist further explained that an internal eruption, however, could result in a plume of smoke heading towards populated areas and could also make air traffic difficult in the area, adding that the rain that would pass through the volcanic gas would be an acid rain that could have consequences on health. Moving on, the transitional president of Guinea, Mamadi Dumbuya, has reiterated his vision of a successful transition to his various ministers. Now he said this during the first meeting of ministers under the CNRD, which took place on Thursday, November 18th. We have more on this report. At the meeting, the newly appointed transitional prime minister, Mohamedi Bevogi, said the transition will be done in a limited time, and this is to prepare the foundations for a better Guinea of tomorrow. Mohamed explained that they have just completed their first meeting of ministers where the president of the republic, Kano Mamadi Doboya, reminded them of the vision and urged them to unity, to work, to the spirit of sacrifice, to self-sacrifice, so that finally... They give Guinea the place it deserves in the concert of nations. For the Prime Minister, the improvement of the functioning of the administration, the construction of an efficient judiciary and the reform of the economy are the urgent projects that await them. In addition, he said he is aware that his government is not a government of development but of transformation. Mamadi Doboya became Guinea's transitional president in October this year after leading a coup on September 5th, which saw the overthrow of 83-year-old President Conde. Conde was the first democratically elected president in 2010 and was re-elected in 2015. He pushed through a controversial new constitution that allowed him to run for a third term in October 2020, which caused chaos in the country. Well, thank you so much, Harry Potter. Let's turn your attention to Mali, where the economic community of the West African states, ECOWAS, has placed sanctions on over 150 members of Mali's transitional government, including the interim Prime Minister, Chongwell Maiga. The financial assets of all those on the list, including the 121 members of the National Transitional Council, have been frozen and they are further banned from traveling within the economic community for West African states. The sanctions also apply to their family members. 21 members have also been included in the list. The transitional president and head of the Junta Kano Asimi Goita and Foreign Minister Abdelay Diop are not on the list. No official communication, but according to several sources, Asimi Goita and Abdelay Diop were left out to allow the transitional authorities to be present at future meetings of the West African body and thus maintaining dialogue between the two parties. The bloc has been piling pressure on Mali's transitional government, demanding they stick on an agreement to organize elections next February. It had warned of sanctions on those it said were frustrating efforts for a return to constitutional rule. In May, Mali junta leader Kano Asimi Goita staged another coup, deposing a transitional administration in which he was vice president. 
he has pledged to stick to the old transition schedule, but his government has been accused of dragging its feet on the efforts to achieve civilian rule. Away from that, top diplomats from the African Union and United States returned to Ethiopia on Thursday as part of a ramped-up push to broker a ceasefire in the country's north, according to the Foreign Ministry. Now, the Foreign Ministry spokesman Dina Mufti was referring to Odo Segan Obasanjo, a UAU's special envoy for the Horn of Africa, and his American counterpart, Jeffrey Feltman. We have more on this report. Both Olusegun Obasanjo, the AU Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, and his American counterpart, Jeffrey Feltman, visited the country earlier this month in a push to facilitate a deal between Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's government and the Tigray People's Liberation Front rebel group, which has been advancing south and has not ruled out a march on the capital Addis Ababa. Obasanjo made two trips to Tigray's capital, Mekhe, to meet TPLF leaders on his earlier trip, a sign of progress after multiple statements in which the TPLF dismissed the AU, which is headquartered in Addis Ababa, as biased in favor of Abiy's government. At a weekly press conference on Thursday, Dina said Obasanjo was shuttling between the various forces as part of a fact-finding type of mission. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken renewed Washington's call for a ceasefire. During a visit on Wednesday to Kenya, his first stop on his first trip to Sub-Saharan Africa since becoming President Joe Biden's top diplomat. Kenya has also played a role in trying to end the conflict and Foreign Minister Rachele Omamo told a joint news conference on Wednesday that her government believes a ceasefire is possible. The conflict broke out last November after a B, winner of the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize, sent troops into Tigray to topple the TPLF a move, he said came in a response to TPLF attacks on army camps. Well, thank you so much, our reporter. We take a quick break. We shall come back with the business news. Welcome back from the break. You're still watching TV Africa, the right to know. In business news today, during a joint press conference in Abuja with Nigeria's Foreign Minister Geoffrey Onyema, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that he backed a greater leadership role by Nigeria but also encouraged accountability of human rights concerns which have rattled the U.S. relationship with Africa's most populous nation. We have more on this report. During his visit to Nigeria, Blinken praised the increasingly deep collaboration between the African country and the U.S. and stressed the importance of cooperation. The comments were welcomed by his Nigerian counterpart, Geoffrey Onyema, who said they were delighted to have U.S. back supporting the multilateral system and tackling climate change. Onyema also called on the U.S. to push other industrialized countries to make good on their promise to give 100 billion US dollars to developing countries each year to tackle and mitigate against climate change. Secretary of State Anton Blinken on Thursday backed a greater leadership role by Nigeria but also encouraged accountability over human rights concerns which have rattled the US relationship with Africa's most populous nation. On his first trip to sub-Saharan Africa, Blinken is seeking to show US commitment in the face of a rising China but is also encouraging African-led solutions to problems, including the spiraling war in Ethiopia. With 20% of sub-Saharan Africa's population and its largest economy, Nigeria has worked with successive U.S. administrations since the return of civilian rule in 1999. Come on. Come on.
Well, thank you so much, a reporter. We turn your attention to our health news today. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, visited the UN Environmental Programs headquarters in Nairobi during his trip to Kenya, where he met with environmental entrepreneurs and pledged to combat ocean plastic pollution. We have more on this report. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that Washington will push for a global agreement to combat ocean plastic pollution at the U.N. Environmental Assembly next year. He said that they are stepping their efforts to tackle another pollutant that threatens our planet, plastic, by announcing the United States' support for multilateral negotiations on a global agreement to combat ocean plastic pollution by launching these negotiations at the UN Environmental Assembly in February 2022 with their goal of creating a tool that we can use to protect our oceans and all the lives that they sustain from the growing global harm of plastic pollution. About 8 million tons of plastic end up in the oceans each year, killing or injuring 1 million birds and more than 100,000 marine mammals, according to UN figures. Blinken's statement is the latest U.S. effort to ramp up environmental protection under President Joe Biden, who has made the fight against climate change a key domestic priority. Blinken had on Wednesday met President Uhuru Kenyatta and hailed Kenya's role in seeking to ease the conflict in Ethiopia and cited Kenya as an example of a vibrant, inclusive democracy despite challenges it has faced in its own recent elections. He further appealed for the preservation of democracy in politically and ethnically fractured societies, citing the worsening crisis in Ethiopia and Sudan. Sports News Today on Thursday, the Star Times Uganda Premier League board announced its monthly award winners, and the KCCA manager Molly Biakwaso was honored with the Pilsner Coach of the Month Award for October. Now, an achievement expected to a certain degree with Biakwaso's KCCA was the only club to win all their games in October. We have more on this report. Viequaso's men have set the early pace in the 2021-2022 season with four victories and only one draw from their opening five games, sitting top of the table on 13 points. The Casasero boys conceded only two goals and scored nine goals during that stretch, leaving them top of the table heading into March day six and can continue their strong start with victory at home on Friday. This is Viequaso's first monthly award but he still has some way to go to catch up on his predecessor Michael Mtevi, who won three monthly awards during his time at Lugogo. Viekwaso was handed the job permanently in July after taking interim charge of the club in March. He was nominated alongside Vipers Sports Club's Brazilian Roberto Oliveira. The former Kampala Capital City Authority midfielder won the online voting poll with 68% of the votes, while he also received 12 votes from a panel of experts beating Oliveira, who polled 32% and 7 votes from the panel. Kampala Capital City Authority's quartet of victories in October started with a comfortable 2-0 victory at Wakiso Giants on the opening day of the season. They then followed that up with a 2-1 home victory over Gaddafi Football Club, completing a trial of victories with a 1-0 victory over Busoga United in Jinja. Kampala Capital City Authority dominated the monthly awards with forward Davis Kassiri winning the Players Award ahead of teammate and captain Benjamin Ochan and Vipers Sports Club striker Caesar Manzoki. Well, thank you so much for being a low audience from where we started from. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We shall keep updating you. It is TV Africa, the right to know.